All right, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got a whole bunch of participants and we had over 100 people register. So I'm sure we're gonna have a whole bunch of people jump in. Um, but so we're trying something new today. Um, I've signed up for um, the captioning service. So um, if you want to be able to read what's on the screen instead of hearing us, um, you can actually turn on your subtitles. If you go to the bottom where it says closed captions, you can turn on the subtitles so that you can see what we're saying live. And um, so just wanted to welcome everybody and give you guys a couple of reminders. So the way that these meetups work is usually we invite a guest speaker who speaks on a topic for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we open it up for a Q&A afterwards. So please save your questions for the end, but feel free to type them in the chat box as we go along. And I'll be monitoring that chat box to make sure that we try to get to all of them. And I saw that a bunch of you submitted questions before the meetup, so we will try to get to all of them, but <laughs> there, there was a lot. So um, we'll see what we can do. But Anyway, I'm Angie Vishianen. I'm the founder of Leg Up Legal. We run a mentoring program that connects prospective law students to lawyers for mentoring. And I am so excited to have Anna Ivy here with us today um, of Ivy Consulting. And she's going to be talking about tips for writing your personal statement. So um, we had a lot of interest in this one. Um, uh, so I'll let you take it away, Anna. Sure. Thanks, Angie. So I have about sort of six or seven general principles that I'll talk about, and I think it'll actually answer a good number of the questions that got emailed and questions that might be occurring to you um, as, as we're going through the webinar. So we'll definitely turn to any that we haven't covered at the end. Um, so we can certainly make that promise. So I'll just kind of power through these overarching principles, and then we can start getting more granular, if that sounds good to you. Sounds good. Okay. So the most important thing I want you to remember about a good, oh, by the way, um, you might see my dog make an appearance every once in a while. <laughs> in, in case you're wondering, like, what's crawling around in my lap, that's my dog. <laughs> Oh, oh and, and one thing I just wanted to mention to everybody, we are recording this session, so if you don't want to be recorded, feel free to shut off your video, um, but we will be recording this for people who couldn't make it today. All right, so most important thing I want you to remember, what, whatever the topic is that you end up writing about, the point of the personal statement is not to show off that you're smart, it's not to show off your academic side, it's not meant to kind of use a lot of words and kind of prove to them that, you know, you're, you're this academic person that deserves to be in sort of the academic big leagues. They look to other things in your application to get a sense of that. Your transcript, they look at your recommendations, right? So that's not what the personal statement is meant to do. The personal statement is meant to be a personal introduction. So there's a reason they call it a personal statement, um, emphasis on personal, right? Um, so do not feel pressure to use a bunch of academic mumbo jumbo or just sort of church up your adjectives and your verbs. Um, in fact, the simpler, the better. Try to use plain English whenever you can, and believe it or not, despite the cliche about lawyers, and I used to be one, um, when you get to your legal writing class, they're going to tell you the same thing. Keep it simple. Uh, you, you know, you don't get any points for big words and sentences that are seven lines long. Um, that's just not the norm anymore for legal writing, and it definitely shouldn't be what's happening in your personal statement. Um, instead, what you wanna be doing in a personal statement is telling a story. Um, so you are going to be writing in the first person. You can use I and me, you can use contractions, you can sound like you're actually talking to someone. That's the more appropriate tone that you wanna be using in your personal statement and I will tell you right now, that's going to freak out a lot of people that you show your essay to. And I will say the more people you show it to, the more conflicting advice you're going to get, and you're going to try to make them all happy, and you're going to end up with a dog's breakfast. So don't do that. Um, in fact, a lot of people will say, oh, it has to sound more formal, or it has to sound more academic, or whatever the case may be. So I'm just going to tell you to resist those urges. You're telling a story about yourself. It's a narrative. Um, so it's not a term paper, okay? Um, in terms of length and topic, you're gonna be aiming for two pages double-spaced. Some schools let you write more, but two pages double-spaced is a good length. For some people, it's 
hard to say as much as they want to say in two pages. For a lot of people, it's like pulling teeth to come up with two pages. Um, and so I would say if you're applying this fall, you still have plenty of time to do some soul searching and some brainstorming and have conversations with actual lawyers and people who are doing the kinds of things that you think you want to be doing. Um, so I would think of it as, or it's what I call the why law essay. Why are you going to law school? Why are you here knocking on our door? Why are you making this big investment? What do you want to do with your law degree? And you don't have to be super specific. You don't have to say, oh, you know, I want to uh, specialize in UCC and commercial transactions. Um, you're not expected to be that far in the weeds, but they want to have a sense that you know why you're there and what you want to get out of it. So when I, um, when I say to people, why law school? It turns out that's a really paralyzing question for a lot of people. So I like to reframe it to get to the same result. So the question I like to ask is, what problems do you want to solve with your law degree? And if you can't think of problems that you're genuinely interested in and that you want to tackle from the legal side, you need to go off and think about it because law school might not be the right thing for you. And you might not have two pages to write about why you want to go to law school. So it's really about your inspiration. What were the things that you've been exposed to or that you've experienced that got you interested in law? And then what kinds of things do you want to be solving and working on after you get out of law school? So there can be this backwards looking piece and then the forwards looking piece. Um, so and, Anna, mm -hmm, if you have a couple of different interests and um, you're applying to different law schools that have strong programs in different areas, should mm -hmm. you be using a different personal statement for each of those schools? Or no, should you no, no. Any law school, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you as if you don't know this. Of course, you've done it yourself. But <laughs> for the rest of the audience, you know, law school is not about teaching you laws with a little L and an S at the end. It's about teaching you how to learn the law and to think like a lawyer, which is a phrase that people throw around all the time. And it's hard to know what that means until you're actually in law school. Um, but what they're giving you is a toolkit. And that toolkit is going to serve you for the whole rest of your career, no matter what kind of law you practice, because your career is going to change. You know, the economy might tank for all kinds of reasons, right? Who, who foresaw this? Not I. Um, so really, you're, you're focusing on learning how to learn the law as opposed to I'm going to learn the laws while I'm in law school. Because guess what? Those laws are going to be changing anyway. They're going to be different by the time you graduate. They're going to be constantly changing. Um, so don't worry if you're interested in different things at the moment. You can mention different things you're interested in. That's completely fine. And you don't really need to change what you say you're interested in from one school to the other. Um, you're much better off just telling them your genuine motivation for going. And that'll serve you so much better than trying to invent some fancy schmancy reason for going to that particular school. And it's just going to be hard to tell that story in a genuine way. Do you agree with that, Angie? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, if your reasons for going to law school are general enough, um, I think, you know, it depends on if you want to, you know, specialize in a certain area that only that law school has. And I might, mm -hmm. I might add a line or two just to mention it. But I would say that, yeah, your personal statement should be something that's pretty universal that you can use for all the different schools. So you're not having to write a unique one every time. Yeah, you really don't have to reinvent that wheel. You can have sort of one personal statement that serves as your template and then you customize, you customize it at the end, basically, if there's something specific you want to say about that school. Um, mm -hmm. But in general, you shouldn't have to mess with the first page and a half, basically, of the essay. That can stay the so same. So that gets to my second question is, how long should this personal statement be? Two pages double-spaced. That's Got the it. goal. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be some optional essay opportunities that varies from school to school. Typically, those optional essays are shorter, so they might be one page double spaced. Um, but the main personal statement aim for two pages double spaced, um, which again, if, if you're not sure or you can't articulate why you want to go to law school, um, you're going to have to find something to say that's going to tide you over for two pages, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you still have time to figure that out. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you're coming right out of college, maybe you don't have a ton of work experience, that's fine. You can talk about things you've encountered in your classes or even in your, you know, your life. 
uh, that got you interested in the law for one reason or another. If you've already been out in the working world, maybe there are uh, professional experiences you've had that got you interested in law. All of that's fair game, all of it. So it really should be tailored to your particular circumstances. There are no sort of magic words here that you're expected to use um, in the personal statement. Um, so just focus on why law school. Some schools will also ask not just why law school, but why are you interested in us? And that's when you need to tailor that, that end of the essay to that specific school. So you're interested in national security law, and this particular school is really good for national security, great. You know, so you write a, a paragraph or so, maybe a bit more about that. Um, other schools will put that question in an optional essay. Um, so you don't have to use up the word count in your personal statement to talk about that school specifically. You can if you want to. So different schools handle it a little bit differently and they sort of slice and dice these things, these things up a little differently. But if you have a two-pager on why law school that's sort of ready to go, you can tinker with it fairly quickly from school to school. That shouldn't be too difficult. Um, the and other thing, I'm sorry, go ahead, Angie. And what about, so how personal is too personal <laughs> to get in your personal statement? Do you, um, do you, is it okay to write about topics that are very, um, that, you know, were really difficult for you if you overcame something that was really challenging, but it is very, very personal? Absolutely. Um, There's no such thing as too personal. And if that, incident or whatever that experience was is so central to who you are that really an admissions officer can't possibly understand you on a human level unless they know this thing about you absolutely that can go in your personal statement and maybe it motivates your reasons for going to law school maybe not you know if the if the essay prompt specifically says why law school and that experience doesn't really feed into that then um, you could put it in the optional diversity statement. We'll talk about that too. Um, the diversity statement is sort of a catch-all where you can write about specific life experiences that might not have anything to do with why you want to go to law school, but these are important things about you that you want the admissions officers to know. So you can, you can mix and match those two kinds of essays to get across the kind of information that you want. But absolutely, you can write about something that was deeply personal, maybe it was traumatic. Um, that's, I've seen many of those essays, um, and sometimes they're exactly the right thing to be writing about for a particular candidate. And can you, so you were talking about the differences between the diversity statement and the personal statement. Is it okay for you to sprinkle elements that could also talk about how diverse you are in your personal statement? Absolutely. You save that for your absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, some schools will limit you to a two page personal statement and that's it. So if they're important elements that you want to get across, you know, you probably want to find some way to work those things into the main essay, but other, most schools will let you submit an optional diversity statement. So you have a whole separate essay that you can write is about something else entirely. Um, so you can, you can um, mix and match those however best suits your particular circumstance. Yeah, so what if the, the thing that you wanna talk about might be something that makes you, that could impact how you practice law or how you are as a law student, like if you have a mental illness or if you had been on academic probation and overcame it or something like that. Mm hmm. Oh, that's a really good question. So in some cases, those are going to be required disclosures. So if you were put on academic probation um, for every law school that I'm aware of, you're, that's going to be a required disclosure. It'll say, have you ever, uh, has any disciplinary action ever been taken against you? And you'll have to check that yes box. And you'll have to write what's called an addendum. An addendum is completely separate from your personal statement. Um, some of them are going to be required. Other ones are going to just be up to you. And it'll be optional if you want to say something about um, that part of your life. Um, typically, I would aim for about one page double space for those, which, but it really depends on your particular story and your particular circumstance. I mean, there's some things that are going to require more word count than that, but for the vast majority of people, one page double space should be fine. Um, but there might be situations where it's not a required disclosure, but they really should know about this part of your background. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you had hearing problems growing up, and so you kind of learned all these really interesting creative workarounds to succeed in life, and in a way, they're now your superpower, you know, fantastic. Um, sure. So, you know, that could be a really interesting, interesting essay. Mental illness is tricky because they're not allowed to ask about mental illness, and you don't have to tell them anything. What I would advise is, 
your story shouldn't be raising red flags. And what I mean by that is the, the admissions officer also has to be thinking about the dean of students. You know, if, if you go to their law school, the dean of students is going to be in charge of, you know, any rough patches that students encounter in law school. And so if you give the sense in your essay um, that you're going to have a tough time, um, whether it's emotionally, mentally, whatever the case may be, if you're going to have a tough time getting through this very demanding uh, law school environment, that might not be the best topic for you, right? And as I say, you don't have to talk about it. You can if you want to, but put your, always try to think like an admissions officer. You know, are they going to worry about you? And mm -hmm. if they're going to worry about you, you know, maybe leave that for a different conversation after you get to law school. You know, illnesses, physical disabilities, um, I think that, you know, that can be such a wide range, but uh, the key, what really helps you is if it's something that you have learned to manage or you've made it go away entirely. Um, so if you give the sense that this is something you've kind of learned how to deal with, mm -hmm. then I don't think that raises red flags and I think that's completely fine. Um, a lot of people worry about, you know, well, what if I had depression and had to leave for a semester from school on medical leave? You know, do I have to tell them about it? Should I tell them about it? Uh, most, well, many applications will ask if there was any interruption in your studies, and that's what they're referring to. It's not, oh, there was a gap between college and law school. What they're asking about is, was there a gap within the program that you were in? So if you're an undergrad and had to take a medical leave, you don't have to give them a reason. You can just tell them, uh, I had to take a medical leave, you know, please let me know if you have any questions. You don't actually have to give any detail, but you can if you want to. And if it was for mental health reasons, there's absolutely no shame in telling them about that. That is actually pretty common. Um, you're not going to raise any eyebrows whatsoever. But again, you want to sort of be able to end the essay in a way that makes them not worry about you going forward because you can tell me if you disagree, Angie, law school is so hard on people's sort of emotional state and mental state that it's going to stress test you. And whatever issues you have coming into law school, they're just going to be amplified when you get there. So you have, if you have issues you need to take care of, go deal with it before law school because it doesn't get better in law school, right? It just gets harder. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I have, yeah. you know, I have some students that they're like, oh, you know, I have a gazillion things going on in my life right now and running to law school is my solution for them. It's like, no, 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 your problems are going to, one, they're just going to be waiting there for you and yeah. likely they're going to intervene while you're trying to, right. you know, do law school. Right. Um, so yeah, you need to make sure that you're at a good place in your life that you can, you know, go and pursue this very rigorous course of study for three years yeah. um so um i think it is it is really tough um to make that call whether or not you're ready but you should think about it before you make the leap yeah um, so do you have any suggestions for people who are either um they're not your traditional like starting as a first year student maybe they're an llm student or they're mm -hmm. a transfer student mm -hmm. how would your personal statements be different for those types of people yeah i think uh as an admissions officer you're going to be just very naturally curious about, you know, why are you doing this? Um, even more so than someone who hasn't attended law school before. But if you have attended law school before, then you're going to, I think the standard is just higher for having a, a plausible reason for why you are now applying to their law school, right? And presumably you have good reasons or you wouldn't be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that can really focus on why transfer or why LLM, you know, why why does, how does an LLM add to your JD? Why do you need to do this? Most people don't go off and get LLMs, right? So the, the mm -hmm. JD is the terminal degree in most cases. Um, so there you really have a pretty narrow focus in your essay. You mm -hmm. want to help them understand why you're making this leap. Um, I'll also say that uh, I get a lot of questions about character and fitness issues. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's disciplinary, which we already talked about. Sometimes it's legal issues, run-ins with the law citations, arrests, convictions, probationary periods, uh, sealed and expunged. I mean, there's all this technical language that you really have to wrap your arms around because every school asks those questions differently. There's not one universal character and fitness question. It would be nice if there were, but there's mm -hmm. not. So every school asks differently. And so it's very normal if you have something in your background, you might disclose to some schools, but you might not have to disclose to others. You just have to be very careful about walking that line because under disclosing 
or failing to disclose something that you should be disclosing can have really big oh, consequences yeah. down the road. So just don't even go there. Yeah, it's those kinds. If you don't disclose and they find out about it's, it, then if you do disclose, bad no, it's bad news. And Angie can can tell you that when you apply for bar membership, it's even more intrusive into oh, your yeah. life than the law school application process. So if in doubt, go ahead and disclose. Um, most things that people have to disclose are what I call small potatoes. Um, just disclose them and move on. Uh, but those kinds of things you want to put in a disclosure addendum. You don't really have to use your personal statement to talk about that kind of stuff. If anything, use the personal statement to highlight something good about yourself, whatever that may be, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can talk about the not so good stuff mm -hmm. elsewhere. And then only if you have to, right? Yeah. So I know a lot of people are, are wondering, you know, should you address anything that's going on with COVID-19 in your personal statement if you're going to be applying in this next in, in this next cycle because it's impacting so many people. Yeah. We saw this a lot with 9-11. We saw this a lot with Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, whenever there's one of these sort of really big, awful events. Um, you read a lot of essays about it. It's very mm -hmm. common. And that doesn't mean it's a bad topic, but understand that they're going to see a lot of them. And so if your job in your, in your application is to separate yourself from everybody else and stand out, that might be a hard way to do it, right? But yeah. everyone is having a diff such a different experience, um, and it's possible that COVID is a big part of why you're applying to law school, right? In which case, absolutely talk about it, right? Um, but I wouldn't necessarily go there uh, unless you have good reason to. Does that distinction yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think, you know, if you um, are doing something right now um, as part of like the relief effort or something like that, or it's, you know, it's raised an issue that you've realized that is really unjust in this world and you want to solve it or something like that, if it really ties into your narrative of why you want to go to law school, um, definitely. But I don't think you should just write about it just for the sake of writing about it. Um, right. So, now, it might have something to do with your timing. It's, yes perfectly fair to say somewhere in the essay, uh, you know, the timing is right now <laughs> because of this <laughs> pandemic. And so it really presented an opportunity in terms of my professional timeline to do this now rather than later. That's completely yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so I know we're starting to get some questions in the chat box. Here. Yes. So, I'm seeing um, them so stream you, in. Yeah. Should you explicitly say why law school or should you use the narrative to tell the story of when you realized you wanted to be a lawyer? Like how far back are you going? In yeah, this that's a good question. Um, a lot of times there's those things are one in the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, but where I often push back a little bit when I see people's essays or drafts of their essays is when people want to go back to I've wanted to be a lawyer since I was three years old and my parents told me I was good at arguing. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Just put it in your drafts folder and leave it there. Um, so they're not so interested in your childhood motivations. Um, so I would go back to sort of your grown up life now that you're able to make grown up decisions for yourself. Why is this a good idea? And maybe some of the experiences in your life go, do go back a ways. So it's not as if you have to hide those in some way. Um, but it's probably not your strongest argument to start with something that, you know, a career choice that you were convinced you wanted to make when you were a child. Um, you know, I, I think I'm trying to think what, you know, I, I went through a phase where I really wanted to be a bank teller. I thought that was the most <laughs> exciting thing. And, you know, that kind of changed over the years. <laughs> no offense to bank tellers, the world needs you. Um, but you know, that's just an example. It's just not, nobody cares. So yeah, um, and you know, I think the the other hard thing too, is if you, you know, you only have two pages, right, of real estate there. So um, if you take right. all of your time talking about, you know, I've wanted to be a lawyer ever since I was five, but then you don't really address what you've been doing currently towards that goal, um, then you're really missing missing the mark, I think. You know, I've read personal statements like that where, you know, students talk about something that happened to them as a child and then they just like completely skip over what have they been doing in even the last four years while they were in yeah. you know, college or currently um, to push themselves towards law school. So I think, you know, you really want to use that those two pages um, wisely because it is precious real estate. So don't, you know, take yeah, it all up with that. That's absolutely true. Um, and two pages double spaced is a very short 
Yeah, it's Sorry. not that much. Uh, it's not that much at all. So you have to be really smart about what makes the cut. And there's a phrase um, or sentence that's been attributed to so many different sources. I don't know what the, what the true source is, but you may have heard the phrase when you're writing anything, you have to be prepared to kill your darlings. Yeah. Because it's hard to take out stuff that you really love, that you've written, but you're going to have to be very brutal in editing your own work um, and deciding what merits being included in these short two pages and, and what needs to You'll have to, to do that as a young lawyer too. You'll tell oh, so absolutely. Oh and anyone who has practiced law can tell you that um, courts, for example, have, or particular judges have very strict rules about length. They might have strict rules about fonts and, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, where you put commas. And oh, I mean, yeah. they get very, very picky. Um, so if that is not your strong suit at the moment, <laughs> make it your strong suit <laughs> before you go to law school. And ideally, you know, before you turn in your essay, because those kinds of little details do get noticed by the legal world. And I'm hearing some questions about weight of the personal statement. You know, I mean, if you have, if you don't have the strongest GPA and LSAT score, um, have you seen a personal statement carry the day? I will say that GPA or undergraduate transcript, I should say, it's not just about one number. Your undergraduate transcript plus LSAT in combination are going to be the most important factors in the outcome. Um, law school admissions officers are being honest when they say that they review applications holistically, uh, but they really care about those two data points. Um, and so if one of them is kind of shaky, maybe you can compensate with the other. If both of them are shaky, that's a tough way to go. And of course, there are different uh, standards for different law schools, right? What constitutes a good LSAT score, for example. Uh, but if both of them are weak, this is going to be an uphill battle for mm -hmm. you. And I don't want to give people the impression that this can somehow write around, you know, both a poor undergraduate transcript and a poor LSAT school score for a particular school. Um, sometimes an undergraduate experience might have a rocky bit and then things got sorted out, in which case, great, put that in an addendum, explain what happened. Ideally, the rocky bit was earlier in your college career rather than later in your college career. But they can't read your minds. So yeah. if there's background information that they should have about you, you need to tell them. They're, gonna, they're not going to know otherwise. Right? But you, you can write the, about those things in your addendum, right? You don't have to waste the precious Don't waste your personal, your personal statement, statement on that. Statement. Exactly. Yeah. Super important. Don't waste your word count for that kind of stuff. As I say, personal statement should be about ultimately, you know, by the end of the essay should put you in a positive light. Anything sure. where you're just explaining rocky bits or negative <laughs> bits, move yeah. those over to an addendum. Um, how would you suggest that a non-traditional student um, who's been an undergraduate longer than four years tackle mm -hmm. the personal statement? Um, is there anything that you should write about in particular? Well, if it has to do with why you're applying to law school, then certainly it can go in your personal statement. But if you have something to say about the timeline of your undergraduate experience, it might be better off in an addendum. And again, it's not necessarily a negative, but it's just something that they're not necessarily going to know about or understand. They're not going to understand the backstory, I should say. Um, maybe it was because you had to be working full time or you were taking care of an ill relative, whatever the case may be. Maybe you had an illness yourself that you had to deal with. Or, was or maybe you just switched majors, right? Maybe you decided you, you wanted majors. to go to law school. And, and you were I mean, there are just so many different reasons why that might be the case. So uh, maybe give them the back, that backstory in an addendum, unless it ties into your why law school narrative. Yeah. Um, can you use humor in your personal statement? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> now, you don't have to feel any pressure to be funny in a personal statement. Maybe the topic doesn't lend itself to that. Maybe that's just not your strong suit. Completely fine. But if you want to be a funny or a little bit whimsical or quirky, yeah, that, that is not a bad thing in an essay that's totally acceptable. And, um, oh, uh, we had a question about would traffic tickets need to be disclosed as such as speeding? Actually, I think th there were some schools that I applied to that said specifically that you don't have to disclose them. And then there were some that said specifically you do. Yeah, so it just I would depends. totally, yeah, I would totally it depends. Just you just have to read those that questions. application carefully. You have to read um, those questions very carefully. They're all going to be different from school to school. But yes, there are some schools where you will have to disclose traffic tickets. And there are certain state bars where oh, you'll yeah. have to disclose oh, sure. parking sticks 
parking tickets and oh, yeah. that can Joining be very the difficult bar. to remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> to go back in time. Gosh, the Virginia bar wanted like, you know, all, all traffic tickets, parking tickets, everything for like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy. Yeah. Um, what are some common mistakes that students make in their personal statements? Uh, they use a bunch of academic mumbo jumbo. Um, it's not a personal story. It's poorly written. Mm -hmm. You know, lawyers do a lot of writing. I don't care what kind of law you end up practicing. Mm -hmm. The written word really, really matters, both in law school and in the practice of law. Um, and so that's something they care about in an essay. It's just, is it, is it well written? Um, can you sure. express yourself well? It doesn't have to be, you're not applying for an MFA. You know, mm -hmm. you're not applying for um, a writing program. So yeah. it doesn't have to be flowery. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't have to sound like someone who writes professionally, um, but it should be good and it should be coherent and it should be grammatically correct. Some of those really basic things. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Uh, and that's where I think it's completely fine to pull someone else in who can help you understand where things need to be fixed. You know, I, I, it's really so, a, a learning opportunity um, if, if someone is helping you with your writing in particular, um, things yeah, like on grammar that and note, spelling. Who's a good person to help you with your personal statement? Your parents, lawyers, roommates, undergraduate writing centers, professors, like who? <laughs> Pre-law advisors, who can help? I've heard a lot of bad advice from parents, <laughs> from yeah. roommates, unfortunately from some pre-law advisors. Some of them give terrible advice. Some of your professors might give you terrible advice because their experience with, with the admissions process is for PhD programs. And the kind of essay that you write for a PhD program is completely different from a law school personal statement. So that's happened a lot when I've worked with applicants is they'll write a perfectly nice personal statement for their applications. Their recommender at school then wants to see a copy and then the recommender just has a complete freak out because it doesn't look like a dissertation proposal that they're <laughs> used to doing. So that, that happens a lot and it's just because a lot of people just don't understand what the function is of the personal statement in a law school admissions process. And it's just very different from applying for an MBA or applying to medical school or applying for a PhD program. So I would say be very judicious about whom you ask to look at your essay, because as I was mentioning earlier on, the more people you ask, the more conflicting and, and frankly bad advice you're going to get. And you have to be really picky about where you're getting advice from. I think in terms of the actual writing, certainly, you know, there might be all kinds of different resources that you have available to help you with things like, you know, this is poorly expressed or I don't understand this bit, you know, go back and clarify it, that sort of thing. But, um, oh yeah, I, I find uh, a lot of applicants have a really tough time um, sort of dealing with their parents when it comes to the essay. Mm -hmm. I've seen parents basically just take over and start driving oh, the yeah. bus. They want to write it. <laughs> it's awful. Like, no. And you know what? It's never an improvement. Never, <laughs> never an improvement. Sorry, parents. It just <laughs> never is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you write about a career field that's not directly related to law, like politics? It, it is related to law, right? Politics is about policy and it's about legislation often, right? Uh, those all are all related to law. So that's completely fair game. Um, we'll take, oh, some more general questions. Will taking the GRE impact your application in any negative way? <laughs> or is there a comparable score to the LSAT that you should be aiming for? I don't have a sort of statistically pure answer to that because we just don't have a lot of history with the GRE being yeah. used in law There's school admissions. It's very, taking it, right? it's very recent. Not all schools take it. So we don't have a bunch of data to look at the way we do with LSAT scores. Schools that do accept the GRE will tell you, oh, it doesn't make a difference which, which score you submit. Based on the last two cycles, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, <laughs> think you, I think you are held to a higher standard with the GRE um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, they're two very different tests. They're very different tests. And the fact that law schools are now accepting either one suggests to me that they're not quite sure what they want what they're the doing with it. Yeah. To do. I mean, it's, it's not confidence inspiring that they say, no. Oh yeah, sure. Either one. Um, <laughs> but the, 
you know, the law, the LSAT is very specific to law school admissions. I don't think anyone else asks for the LSAT, right? Whereas the GRE gets used for all kinds of master's programs, uh, all kinds of graduate programs, and it covers a wide range of applicants as well. And so I think the competition is just harder in terms of the curve and the grading. I think the or scoring, I should say. I think the competition is just harder with the LSAT. And so if you're at a very high percentile in the GRE, it's just not as impressive as a very high percentile on the LSAT. Um, but for some people, they've already figured out, I'm just going to do better on the GRE than I would on the LSAT, then sure, you know, you don't, I don't think you need to push that boulder up a hill. Uh, but if you're sort of indifferent or you're trying to decide ahead of time which one to commit to, I've seen a lot of people um, disappointed with the results they got using a GRE score mm -hmm. based on the percentile. I will also say that ETS has this conversion tool on their website where you plug in your GRE scores and it spits out what's supposed to be a comparable LSAT mm -hmm. score. I don't put any stock in that at all. I think <laughs> it wildly inflates what a comparable LSAT score would be. Sure. And so I think it's incredibly misleading. I would not rely on that. Whatever that pool is telling you, I would gross it up um, and, you know, bump up whatever the, the standard is for your, your GRE score. I have to no have idea a how they could be doing score. calculation for that because they, they are such different it's, tests. They it's test just, completely it's, different things. It's bogus. It's a bogus comparison. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's a little bit like um, conversion tools uh, that are comparing the SAT to the ACT. Those are two very different tests as well yeah so i think a lot of that is a bit phony baloney <laughs> so um, just understand the lsat for many people is a harder exam than the gre and likely you will be held to a higher standard with your gre score we've got a pre-med student in here they're not pre-law they're wondering if the two-page personal statement is only specific to law school or is that med school too I'm not going to offer an opinion on med school. That <laughs> is not my area of expertise, and I probably know just enough to be dangerous. Um, just like all those people I just told you about, you know, giving you advice for your law yeah, school personal I don't know statement. About med they know just enough to be dangerous. So yeah. I'm not going to offer an opinion um, on on medical school essays. There are people who specialize in that. <laughs> I will say though that it's a common misconception that somehow you need to be a pre-law student to to be a good candidate for law school, and that's oh, yeah. absolutely no, no. Oh, not the case. Yeah. Not the case at all. You can major in all kinds of things that you know don't oh, really yeah. have anything to do with pre-law. So that's that's a misconception, and I'm I'm glad that came up because pre-law really doesn't give you any kind of advantage. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so earlier you mentioned that it's not necessarily necessary to focus on your academics and your personal statement because transcripts and LSAT will provide that information. Is it the same for the experience listed in your resume or should you focus on your work experience and or volunteer experience in your personal statement? Right. You really want to think of the application as a whole because that's how admissions officers are going to read your application. They're not going to read your essay in a vacuum. They're not going to look at your resume in a vacuum. So information that you can put in a resume doesn't necessarily have to be included in your personal statement unless it serves some kind of specific purpose in your personal statement as well. Each part of the application is prime real estate. Uh, you don't want to use them duplicatively. Certainly, if you're writing about professional experiences that got you interested in law, then Yes, I think almost by definition, they're also going to show up on your resume, and that's completely fine. But be really mindful of uh, using different parts of the application in a redundant way, because that's not serving you well. You could be using that space differently, right? Um, I think we kind of answered this a little bit before, but what about a personal statement for LLM programs? Are there any specifics? It's just, why are you doing this? Why yeah. are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> and again, held to a slightly higher standard than someone applying for a JD, just because you've already been in law school, so you should have a pretty clear idea of why you're, you're going to this LLM program. And LLMs tend to be very specialized, too. So there are LLM programs for internationally trained lawyers. Those are very specific programs. For domestic lawyers, uh, you might do an LLM in tax, for example. NYU has a really prestigious one, those tend to be very specialized. So yes, you have to have a very plausible story to tell about why you need an LLM in tax, for example. <laughs> uh, 
Um, how do you know if a specific topic is compelling? What sort of prompts would you recommend to a candidate who wants to brainstorm for their personal statement? What if you just have writer's block? <laughs> Again, I come back to what, what problems do you want to solve? Mm -hmm. And you want to show at least a little bit of fire in the belly. You know, you want to sound really animated. Like, what is propelling you to do this? And whatever that answer is, is the right one for you. Um, so focus on what you want to accomplish with your law degree. What are the things that would be holding you back in your life if you didn't have a law degree, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can figure out the authentic answer to that, that's what makes your essay good. Awesome. Um, can you talk about graduating early and how that might affect a student's chances of being admitted? I don't think it really makes a difference as long as you end up with your bachelor's degree, right? Um, and if that takes a shorter amount of time, that's fine. Uh, as long as it doesn't compromise your grades, because the grades are really going to matter to law school admissions officers. So if you're rushing through and loading up on credits and your GPA takes a hit, that might not be worth it. Now, you might not have a choice. There might be financial reasons why you have to load up and kind of get, school, get college over with. Fine, you know, give them that backstory in an addendum. Um, so uh, having, having a shorter time span for college is fine as long as it's not at the expense of your GPA. And if it is at the expense of your GPA, GPA help them understand why you really didn't have much of a choice but to, to power through like that. Um, in the personal statement, should we focus on one defining event or is it okay if we discuss multiple instances that led to the decision to go to law school? Multiple is fine. You know, uh, you, you have to be careful not to try to cover too much in a two-page essay, because if you try to cram too many things in there, you're just not going to be able to say much about any one thing. So there's a balance to be struck, um, but certainly you can have more than one reason you're interested in law or more than one kind of issue that you hope to, to work on with your law degree. Um. So I think that's actually all the questions that we had in the chat box. We actually got yes. Um, oh, no, we just got one. <laughs> Should we follow the five paragraphs? Oh, oh, thank you. Whoever you, I'm not going to name you. I'm not going to out anyone. <laughs> this, this is all anonymous, but thank you. You know who you are. Thank you for asking that. Okay. I want to take the five paragraph structure for these purposes and drive a stake through it until it's dead. <laughs> dead. Good. We don't want a zombie situation. Like it has to be dead. That is the absolute worst thing you could do for a personal narrative. Yep. So, I mean, that is the most boring thing when I you know. want a personal stare, right? When you want a personal narrative, you've got an introduction, you've got three supporting paragraphs and you have a conclusion that's just completely redundant and sort of restates everything you've already said. It's only two pages. They're not going to forget what you were <laughs> saying over the course of two pages. So again, kill it until it's dead. Don't go there. Um, yeah, so I think we actually, we got through all the questions in the chat box. Let me look at the questions that people submitted ahead of time, see if we haven't covered anything. Um, so, um, to, um, oh, here we go. Um, did we just go through the main principles of personal statements? Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> um, yeah, but, I think this will be um, available as a recording, right? Yes, so people yes. can go back and catch up on anything they might have missed. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, if law school is a couple of years away for you, um, how should you be thinking about your personal statement now? I wouldn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, so much is going to change between now and then. I just think it would be <clears throat> premature and probably you're going to have to start over from scratch anyway when the time comes. So I would not make that a priority. I mean, you can jot down ideas somewhere, you know, um, and sort of hang on to them for p potential material down the road, but I wouldn't spend too much time on it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, how much time should you prepare for your personal, to write your personal statement? Yeah, I think it comes very naturally to some people and not at all to others. So I think that can really vary. I've seen people come up with an amazing personal statement in the first draft and like maybe you have to fix a comma or something, but like there's just nothing you could do to improve it, in which case, yay for you. You know, you didn't have to, that's, 
it's possible you did spend a ton of time on it before you showed anyone a first draft, but um, that's just by way of saying there are other people that have to go through 14 drafts of something before it's in the kind of shape it should be, and that's completely fine. I mean, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. However, I'm so glad you asked this. However, what I also see happen a lot is that people don't know when to stop. <laughs> so an essay might be great at, I don't know, draft seven, and then you just keep tinkering with it, tinkering with it, because you can't leave it alone, and it's just causing so much anxiety, because once you submit it, you can't take it back, and then the fate is in their hands, and so as long as you can keep tinker on it, tinkering on it, you feel you know, better about the situation and less anxious. That's not helping yourself at all. Um, I've seen people add draft after draft after draft, where they just tinker with one word in the conclusion. Years ago, I remember someone who just was agonizing over whether to describe his grandfather as a fisherman or a clam digger. I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, right. can, a lot of times when people get to that tipping point, any tinkering they do is not actually making the essay better. Oh yeah, way. there's definitely a point of diminishing returns. <laughs> and there definitely comes a point when you start making it worse. Yes. The more you tinker with it after you got it in good shape, you're probably introducing new things new errors that you need to fix, whether it's word choice or grammar or clarity. Uh, oh, that's so common. So I'm a yeah. big fan of the French philosopher Voltaire who said, don't let, the en <laughs> don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And oh my gosh, that is so important when it comes to writing anything, but oh, so yes. your, your personal statement. Um, are there any topics that are cliche that you just see <laughs> over and over and over again and that you're just like, this has just been, you know, you're beating a dead horse? <laughs> well, I'll say that the bad, quote unquote, bad personal statements are the ones that are generic. I want, you know, I want to make the world a better place. I want to have an impact. I want to give back. That's all well and good, but that's just way too general and way too abstract you need to get specific. And again, that's why I love that question. What problems do you want to solve? Name some, right? Um, because those really generic ones, it's just a bunch of wugga mugga, wugga mugga. <laughs> and nobody will remember that essay when it comes time to make a final decision. So I would say that what takes a, um, an essay and turns it from maybe good to great, it's to take it from the generic to the more specific. That's a huge distinction for personal statements and what makes a personal statement really successful. I love that you said that because I, I think this was actually a question that was submitted beforehand is what, what changes it from good to great. And I totally agree with that. I think that the people who talk about, you know, kind of zone, zone in on what really, really, you know, makes them want to be a lawyer. And it also kind of shows like a level of sophistication of how much do you know about this too. If you just say something general, like, you know, I just want to save the world like that. Mm -hmm. I think that it kind of shows that you haven't really done the homework to find out what a lawyer really does. Or the hard um, thinking, right? The yeah. hard thinking about it. Um, there's a concept in economics that I love when it comes to um, personal statements or the applications in general, and it's the concept of signaling. In economics, mm -hmm. it's all about prices signaling, and, and so I sort of borrow that concept because, especially with your essay, you are signaling to the admissions officer that you have given this real thought. Mm -hmm. You're not applying to law school by default. You're not applying to law school because it's the path of least resistance. <laughs> not applying to Definitely law school because your parents are on you, your back and like, oh, look, here's another shiny degree, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of bad reasons that people apply to law school. And so what you want to do in your essay is you don't have to state expressly, I'm not applying by default, but you want to be signaling with your essay that you have done the hard thinking about this. Yeah. Um, so think about it as signaling. You're signaling something about the seriousness um, of your commitment. Does the personal statement have to have a title or no, headings, no, no, no. Or point headings or anything? Yeah. Okay. No, no. Mm -mm. Good question. Yeah. If I see them, I, I always say take them out. <laughs> um, so I think that's all we have. I mean, you guys we feel free to like chime in. We have just a few more minutes left. So no headings. Yeah, unmute yourself and right. just jump in and, um, and ask away. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the chat box. So don't, don't, don't hold back. A lot of good questions, though. Yeah. I'm so glad uh, because they sort of prompt certain things for me to talk about that 
I wouldn't have mentioned otherwise. So I love yeah. the questions. No, I mean, I definitely, I get questions about personal statements from students all the time. So it's definitely a hot topic. You know, I think it is hard when you're just writing for a blank page. It's, you know, and like, it's so hard sometimes to talk about yourself. Uh -huh. And I don't mean in terms of like, oh, I feel awkward. I mean, maybe you feel awkward, but I think more commonly the, the difficulty is that you don't have any kind of editorial distance from yourself, right? So trying to figure out what actually is interesting about you is like, ah, you know, and that's where someone who's sort of standing outside might say, oh, no, this is actually really interesting over here. And that's just, that's really hard. That's hard. Then it's hard about any kind of writing in the first person, I think, just because we just don't have that, we, we don't have that perspective. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, let's see here. Um, we got a couple. What mm -hmm. role do anecdotes play in a personal statement and how important are they? Yeah, no, that ties in completely. Thank you for asking that. That ties in completely into the advice about making it specific and not generic. So uh, a well-placed anecdote or example can take something from generic to specific. And anecdotes tend to be memorable and sort of sticky in a way that generic things aren't. And so, I mean, there are things I still remember from essays I read a long, long time ago just because they were sticky. You know, they painted a very specific picture and I still have it in my head, you know, which is saying something. And if it's generic, then nobody has that picture in their head. And when you get to committee, however many weeks later, you want to have that sort of stickiness in their mind. So they're like, oh yeah, that is the person um, who had all that experience as a kid um, in the immigration system, for example. There are going to be a lot of those essays, I think. Um, <laughs> and so I think that also ties into one of the other questions that came in, which is, you know, what if it was when I was 12 or 13, but it actually ties into why I'm interested in law school? Completely fine. Completely fine. Just avoid the, you know, I'm good at arguing and I have wanted to do this since I was a baby in the carriage, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Can you describe the difference between a personal statement and diversity statement? I think we touched on that before, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. You can go back and watch it, but generally the personal statement is answering a specific question, you know, why law school, for example, whereas a diversity statement doesn't have to be related to law in any way. It's just giving some backstory about yourself and what kind of perspective or life experience you have that you would be contributing to the incoming class. Um, and so it can be talking about very different things than what you have in your personal statement. And diversity can be really broad. I don't want mm, you to just mm -hmm. think about racial diversity. Or Absolutely. Diversity. You know, I mean, if you are contributing something unique to the learning environment, law schools want to see that. They want to make sure that, you know, the the class is going to be very enriching for each other. And so if you're a non-traditional student in any way, if you have significant work experience in another area, you know, those things could make you diverse. Absolutely. They don't have to be sort of the, you know, you're not checking boxes there, I would say. Um, and I also personally like to stay away from the word unique because I find it a bit paralyzing because, you know, are you the only person who, I don't know, has worked on the Hill and is now interested in law school? No, but that's okay. You know, yeah. are you the only person who maybe, you know, grew up abroad and speaks a bunch of languages? Probably not. You know, they probably see a bunch of those and that's fine. So don't put that much pressure on yourself. I think you're not expected to be literally one of a the only one. Yeah. That would be very scary. I think that would be very hard to write. Sure. Um, if you're a STEM major, but you've done a lot of work in political activism in your free time, is it bad just to talk about the political activism, but not address the STEM major in my personal statement? That's completely fine. And STEM majors are absolutely welcome in law schools. Absolutely welcome. So that's not a, that's a feature, not a bug. Uh, so that's completely fine to talk about these other things in your life that got you interested in law school. Now, if you're far down, a, you know, farther down a particular track, maybe you're already working in industry, for example, with your particular technical background, they might be very curious why you're doing this pivot to law, right? Mm -hmm. So you should probably say a little bit about that. But the fact that you majored in something STEM related, that's as acceptable as majoring in political science, for example. Totally. Um, can my significant other review my personal statement or is it a little too subjective? I wouldn't want my significant other review. Ooh, God bless him, but no. I, I think that all depends. <laughs> that all depends. 
I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know your significant other. Um, nope. Let's see. My personal statement is very serious, but I think of myself as a fun person to be around. <laughs> is there any way for me to remain professional and show some of my fun side in the application? Yeah, absolutely. And there's some applica applications that lend themselves more to that than others. So for example, Georgetown Law School has for a long time had these really wonderful optional essays and some of them really are inviting just quirky things and that's so much fun. So you could show a very different side of yourself in some of these optional essays, for example. Um, I'm trying to remember who it is. I think it's Columbia Law School recently added a question that said, you know, tell us a fun fact about yourself. Oh dear. Which is hilarious because, you know, I, I appreciate the effort. They're trying to take this somewhat you know, anxiety inducing thing, the application and right. introduce some fun into it, but it had the absolute opposite. <laughs> it stressed people out so much. Like, what should I put here? And it says it's optional, but can I actually leave it blank? I mean, people stressed out so much over the fun facts question, which is ironic, oh gosh, right? Um, but yeah, there are, there are probably different places where you can inject something a bit more lighthearted. And I think that's actually a good idea if, for example, your personal statement is really heavy. And sometimes they are, and that can be completely appropriate. Um, but maybe you try to find some other opportunities in an optional essay, for example, to show um, a different side. How do you read the personal statements when you work at admissions? Everyone submits between four to five pages with the personal statement, addendum, and diversity statements. And with all the hundreds of applicants, how do you read all of them? Very quickly. <laughs> very quickly and that matters I'm glad you asked that matters because the language you use and the writing you use in your personal statement can't be so complicated that it really requires someone to go back and reread something to understand it that's a real problem they don't have time for that so it has to be something that's very easy to follow in a very short amount of time and in just one read through that might be all you really get um, and one technique, one technique I really like to use is to read it out loud because a lot of times things might look fine in writing, but as soon as you start reading it aloud, you realize like, oh, this sentence is way too hard to follow or gosh, I keep stumbling over this sentence construction and you're much more likely to hear that than to see it. So do that test before you submit it. Is it better for the personal statement to match with the mentor's letter of recommendation for applicants? I don't um, I think if I'm understanding the question correctly, you know, rec recommenders are going to focus on certain things and does that match up with the personal statement? Your personal statement can be completely unrelated things. Yeah. And in fact, when I think there's a downside to having the personal statement and the recommendations look coordinated, if that makes sense, because they're not supposed to be coordinated, right? You're not supposed to be influencing what those recommenders are saying. I think recommenders often ask for your personal statement because they're doing a nice thing, which is they don't want to write a letter that's going to conflict or undermine however you're positioning yourself in your application. That causes a lot of timeline issues for people, though, because maybe they haven't even started writing a personal statement yet, but you were hoping that the person could write the recommendation while you were working on the personal statement. So that's actually a little problem that, that comes up a lot. <laughs> so better to think that through because maybe they don't actually need the whole essay. They just, if you give them two paragraphs in an email about why you're doing this and why it's, it matters to you, that's really all they, they needed for the purposes of their letter. Yeah. Um, um, oh, can I say one more thing in yeah. general? You don't want letters from mentors for your recommendations right. unless they have taught you in the classroom. Um, the preference is for academic recommendations that are firsthand. These are people who've taught you in a demanding academic environment. It could be a professor. It could be a TA. That's completely fine. But it needs to be that kind of firsthand academic teaching relationship. Sometimes you've been out of school so long that, or you've gone to a really big school and it would just be very hard to get a meaningful academic recommendation or let alone two. That's fine. Go get professional ones. Um, the least interesting and the least useful for these purposes is to go get one from the soccer coach or my pastor <laughs> or a judge or this famous politician. None of that is going to matter. None of it. Um, so I know we're at the top of the hour. So, um, do you have time? I think we only had one more question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you mean when you said in regards to personal statement mistakes that personal statements are not a personal story? Well, it needs to be about you, right? Um, so for example, 
I've seen in sort of the bad essay category, I've seen people write sort of a manifesto or <laughs> sort of a position paper or almost like an op-ed in a newspaper about a particular issue that they feel really strong about, strongly about. This is not an issue paper. This is not meant to be a term paper. It's supposed to be about you. So whatever you end up writing about, ultimately it needs to be about you. And that's what I mean with it has to be a personal story. It shouldn't be about some issue, you know, that you're debating the pros and cons about. They're not looking for you to have sort of smart lawyerly arguments about this position or that position. That's not what the personal statement is meant to do. Right. Okay. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And my um, pleasure. So, you know, if anybody else has um, more questions, you know, feel free to email me and I can send them on to, um, we can, we can do another webinar. <laughs> yeah, we can do another one. I'm not um, going anywhere. Welcome to my, my guest <laughs> <right>? room. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm like, no plans. Just I'll be here nice for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, you know, I think it, so we're, you know, we're looking for more, um, things that you guys want to hear about. So if, um, if you want to talk about a specific topic, please email me. I'm going to drop my email in the uh, chat box and feel free to, um, ask, you know, what topics you want to see and we will reach out to speakers and see if we can get them on. Um, other than that, we're going to be doing a networking webinar next week because I know some of these are more of us talking at you and I want a chance for you guys to all to be able to interact. So if you're interested in doing the networking webinar, we're going to be emailing out information about that. So um, other than that, you all have a wonderful, safe, and happy week. And if you have anything you need, just reach out. Yeah, and I'll also just say that um, I do a, a weekly, sometimes more than weekly, newsletter, email newsletter. Yeah. So if you want to hear from me uh, at least once a week, go to my website and sign up for the newsletter. Um, if that's too much of a good thing, that's okay. I won't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna, for being my on. My pleasure. It's good to soon. see you again. Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye. for the great questions.